Okay, hey guys. So, back. Um, today we're going to focus on Vue. The thing is, I'm not religious about frameworks. Oh, let me change this, sorry. I'm not religious about frameworks, and I think that, you know, it's great to just learn for the sake of learning. The reason that I want to talk to you about Vue, specifically, is because Vue, well, I'm developing a course for it, obviously, but um, Vue is really interesting because it is such a well-devised uh, addition to your, your, your tool belt that simply by using it and, a lear and learning a little bit of the tools, you can like scaffold websites with this like enormous ease, or you can make websites interactive, or you know non-interactive websites more more easily programmed. So let me just show you like, two examples, just so you sort of see the the significance of you, um, and then we're going to start from the absolute basics. So my hope is that this will be one of maybe three plus screencasts. Um, uh, live cast e each uh, about maybe an hour, hour more, depending on questions. So, so yeah, this is going to be all about getting basically bootstrapping with Vue uh, and and really starting to understand the the power and the the flexibility and the ease that is programming with just a little bit of, of JavaScript, but JavaScript that is idiomatic, so that it's not overwhelming for you or to reading somebody else's code because. Usually, right when you program JavaScript, like you have all these like random script files, blah blah blah, and then like in each file you have all these like random rules. And the thing is, JavaScript is like pretty much harmless when you're looking at just like a few files or like a few functions. But the problem is that JavaScript, in my personal opinion, um, I've avoided it for a long time, and I, I think it's partly because it doesn't scale very well. It's not a type safe language, which means I can define a function. Let me do like. Let's do function uh, JavaScript. Okay, so it's like in JavaScript, if I do like function A, B, right? Point blank, there's an issue with this function, which is um, I don't know what the types of A and B are, which to an extent is fine, right? Because it's a scripting language, it doesn't need it types. But it also, if you've spent any time in JavaScript, know that this is an issue and know that this creates a lot of pain down the line. So let me just be clear, Vue will, will not fix this. Um, but what Vue will do is making organizing the functions and putting it into an idiomatic format, um, which, which can help you with everything. And also, oh, I'll show you, don't worry. Okay, so let's see. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and let me know. I'll, I'll check back every few moments. Um, otherwise, we're going to get started. So let me show you an example of what we can do with Vue. Now, I don't know that this is the most like practical or useful example of like why why you might use Vue, but I think it's I think it's interesting enough to highlight it. Okay, so if you look right here, the header for this is completely generated. I am not hard, well, let me point out, this is HTML and CSS. This background, it's no Photoshop, there's nothing special, um, right? Even this one, actually, it's not view. But but this is, this is view. And so let me show you the, the source file. I'm gonna open it in Safari, and then let's do iTerm. Uh, so I won't go too fast. Basically, we're going to change in to a directory, so cd for change directory, and then we're going to open my, uh, the, the tilde is for my home directory, and then I have a folder called Twitterbot. Oops, let me turn off my phone. Okay, cool. Now, inside of here, I have folder, and then, yeah, so header three. So if I do open header three, and then I want to say in Safari, so check this out. Um, this is a website, which, I mean, it's cool, but let me like, I'm gonna turn on the debugger, and this is what it looks like, which I think is pretty fascinating. Um, the reason that some of these bots have a different color, especially when you select them, is because I'm using a filter, uh, is it, uh, sorry, it's like, so we're like inside of a, a CSS rule, right? We're here, and then we can say like filter, uh, is it hue rotate? Okay, so effectively, um, this whole thing is just HTML and, and CSS. 
So the thing, the reason that Vue has anything to do with this, despite that it doesn't have to, is because the simplicity of the code is is surprising, and that's because of Vue. So let me show you. Uh, we'll do uh, Sublime Text. This is a nice technique if you want to open an application. I don't know if it's specific to Macs, but you can do open the name of the file, and you can say specifically in the application that that matches Sublime Text. Okay. So let me point this point this out. Um, if we look back at this, there are, I think the exact number is 96. There are 96 instances of like paragraphs where I have this bot. Um, but I'm not going to hard code that specifically because if I wanted to change something, like I don't want to have 24 columns. Like I want 30 today, right? That's not a problem, right? Uh, if I wanted to have 16 rows instead of eight, well, okay, there's too many. But the point is, that's not a problem. And this is interesting um, because we don't, I mean, I think if you're a code newbie or you're coming from 100 days of code, you may not instinctually think to write websites in this manner. And so let me just highlight now how it is that Vue is helping us. And then we'll go into a very basic example, not assuming anything, and, and work up to at least two examples or so, uh, depending on time. So let's check for questions. Okay, what about TypeScript? How did you, okay, great. So, okay, thank you for your questions. Uh, super important because this goes on YouTube after, so obviously I don't want to miss anyone. All right, so TypeScript is an option. Um, the thing is, TypeScript is an abstraction that was developed by Microsoft to help developers right, have a type safe language. So if I'm programming in Python, I don't know what types are, right? It's the same as JavaScript. Um, I think Ruby is also, uh, uh, I don't know, it's not it's type unsafe. Maybe that's not the word. The point is that um, type safe languages, they, the language needs to be type safe. You can have an abstraction, right, which is what a TypeScript is. You can have an abstraction on top of a language to create some enforcements, just like in JavaScript. Um, to my benefit, I can use you strict to sort of support me if I'm, I'm doing something too, too unsafe. But type safe doesn't Personally, in my opinion, I don't think it really fixes the problem at the at the core of it. Um, and I and I've read, it's like a rumor. I've read that TypeSafe doesn't integrate 100% with Vue, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, but the point is, when you're authoring JavaScript, you have to be safe. You have to be careful, and it's for that simple fact that anything that we can do to improve the quality of JavaScript goes a long way, just because of the wackiness of the language. So again, Vue is not going to replace JavaScript. Vue is actually JavaScript. Let me let me show you, because uh, I think I might have been too vague. So Unpackage is a really nice website to unpkg for for getting not just the 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 source code for a project, but for it to automatically load the, the most recent version. So I want to do slash Vue. I recommend you to try this yourself, because if you're watching this in the future, you know, you're not going to get the same result. So if we do that, so this is Vue, right? And think about it. Th uh, this is 10,000 lines of JavaScript that have been, sorry, that have been written for you in a way to make your life easier. Um, the, the, what's interesting is if you go to GitHub and you look at Vue there, this is not how Vue was organized. So this is the, the output when you compile Vue to one file. You're not like compiling it to machine code, but you're compiling it to one file, concatenating, right? But Vue, the actual source code, is broken over tons of files to make it easier for developers. So I just think it's, it's interesting because um, once you start getting into code, a thousand lines of code isn't so, such a big deal. And you can sort of like, okay, today I wrote a hundred lines of code, right? I can think about code in terms of a thousand lines. And Vue in itself is a 10,000 lines. So, you know, over maybe a couple weeks, week, depending on your, your, your understanding of JavaScript, you can go through the source code. Just like Bulma, right? Bulma is like 10,000 lines of uh, compiled, yeah, it's 10,000 lines when it's compiled to CSS. And it's like, it's like maybe half that when you're, no, it's like a tenth of that if you like look at just the SAS. So, right, the, the thing is, um, we're not using a new language 
and we're using a framework, but we're using a framework that builds on the resources that our computer will give us, or sorry, our browser will give us for free. Uh, and another sort of like a cool thing about Vue, Vue goes all the way back to like IE Internet Explorer like nine or something. So as far as like like browser um, support, it, it's definitely up there among the, the better ones. Okay, let's talk about the debugger just for a real quick second. Um, if you want to be able to go to a website, like let's say, I want to go to like bulma.io, right? And I want to see this website through the lens of the debugger, which just for what it's worth, this is executing a tiny bit of JavaScript that is inserting a few global CSS rules that are like apply the color, the background, and the blah, 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 right? It's saying uh, apply these styles pervasively throughout my the, the website I'm seeing for the benefit that I can understand it. I mean, look at this, right? I can see the actual like architecture of this website. This is um, not that hard. So what we can do is just go to gist. Uh, uh, you know what? Here, there's this other link, bit.do slash lols help CSS. So if you go, oops, if you go here, uh, it might take a second to load. I've had like varying success with the, the, the time that it takes. Um, once that loads, that should redirect you to a gist, which explains a bit more about it. And thanks to last night, we now have a video that talks about the significance or the emphasis of the debugger, how I came to sort of come up with it. But anyway, once you're here, you can hit the first link, which will take you to this like extremely simple website. Um, this is a JavaScript bookmark that in theory works in every browser that you just drag to like a bookmarks bar and you click it to enable or disable it. So that's the debugger, right? Uh, I think it, it, it helps with development. So I, I use it like everywhere. And if you don't like the style, you can go in the source code and tweak it. There's nothing about it that's like closed or, or whatever. Okay, just gonna check for extra questions. Okay, I think we're good. I always have to wait like 10 seconds to double check. So I'm just gonna be a bit patient here. Okay, I think we're good, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, anyway, um, so let's go, like, let's look at this generative file right here. How does one do this? Um, at least without losing one's mind. So this is the significance of you. If I showed you just this code, you're gonna recognize about half of it, right? I've got a div, I'm using an ID got some classes, no big deal. But then the more we get into this code, the more you're gonna notice something that you haven't seen. We have two interesting things here. We have a colon style, so it's not style, it's colon style. And then inside of it, I have this like really crazy expression. expression. Now, there are other ways to write this expression. This is by no means the best or like the correct way. It's actually sort of a bit much. But the significance is, is that Vue allows us to not just have like, you know, with HTML and CSS, you get like style and I can inline my style, just like I do here where I'm like applying an outline to our, our generative art right here. But right here, this is different. Um, this is actually taking a, it's taking basically like a, like it's like JavaScript light. It's not actually JavaScript, but it's like a light version of it. And it's applying basically font size, filter with a hue rotate, and a general transform, uh, which is just a CSS property. And combined, actually this one's commented out, but combined, um, what I'm effectively doing is getting a random font size between eight and uh, 24, and I'm generating a random um, hue between negative 180 and 180 degrees. Uh, yeah, that's right. And so every paragraph is getting its own unique font size and its own unique hue rotate, um, which is really interesting because this means, right, with like one line of code, well, that's a little bit more, but that we can think about our websites in terms of like these general structures or even like as algorithms and not just markup syntax because markup syntax is really limited in its scope. Um, and I think it just helps with readability. 
So again, this is running a light version of JavaScript where I can define custom functions that can take their own arguments. And now you might be wondering, like font size, wait a minute, font size is like, it's like this, which is like more comically known as a kebab case, right? Because like kebabs, yeah. So alternatively, because um, it's JavaScript, it's going through a little engine that's saying, hey, if you're using camel case, right, camel case, then I'll go ahead and, and figure that out for you. Because in JavaScript, I can't do like var a equals like, well, I can't do like kebab case, right? Because this wouldn't be a legitimate key character in an identifier. So view is helping us out and it's saying, hey, if you'd rather do um, camel case, right, then I'll go ahead and, and, and interpret that as kebab case. So our font size is getting transformed into kebab case and effectively is identical to like doing font size, right? That would be, that would be equivalent. Um, yeah, now the other really, really interesting thing is as you get into programming, you're gonna get used to control flow, right? So control flow is the flow of control. It's the, obviously, it's the flow of your program. And so you're like, you're, you know, you're used to ifs and like whiles and like do, do, and so on. And, and this is called control flow. You're controlling the flow of your program. Now, what's interesting is we're using control flow in HTML, which is a bit mind blowing. Um, because instead of saying, yo, I got like 24 times eight, okay, that's 192, and then like copying and pasting this paragraph, 190, because that'd be like insane. What we're doing instead is we're saying, we're using a special version of a for loop. We're using v4, and with that, we're gonna iterate over every area in areas, which we'll talk about that just in a second. But the point is, um, all this is being generated because of you basically is like going into your your like website and like putting a jetpack on everything. Um, you know, you have, you can use like a light version of JavaScript in your, your markup, which may be hard to read, but you can refactor it. You can use control flow. You can use like, can, like you can do this really crazy nonlinear things that I don't think that you can do at least with any like sanity in like vanilla HTML and CSS. And the reason that I am advocating for Vue, not that I'm like not advocating for Angular or React, um, is because those do require a build process as far as I'm aware. And the trouble with that is that you can't just like hit the ground running. You've gotta like, first you gotta install like ND, NPM and like deal with the pain of that and you gotta, the thing is like development shouldn't alienate you. And what I love about Vue, and I'm not saying this for like any ulterior reason. The reason I love Vue is because if you want to use Vue, it is HTML compliant. You are just loading up a script and you are doing something inside of the script. And all of this is within the realm of how HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, how we've come to learn them. But they're so well written and well documented that we have a, we have a chance to do something different and, and fun with our websites that I think will make a huge impact. Um, so for what it's worth, uh, I don't know when Angular or React popped up, but I know that Vue popped up around 2014 or so, so it's actually pretty newish. Um, jQuery, for what it's worth, completely changed like the frontier of web design, and as you know, like 100 days of code, you're still learning and using jQuery to this day. A lot of people compare Vue to jQuery in terms of its sort of general usefulness and its and it and it and its unwillingness to sorry and its unwillingness to sort of alienate you, you as a developer. Just make sure. Oh, I thought I wasn't recording and I like nearly had a heart attack. Okay, let's check for questions. Yeah, right. So 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 view is really wonderful. Okay. Um, do you guys have any questions before we start? Uh, from scratch because this is a bit too much to start with, but we'll, we'll start with scratch and we can come back to this at the end if you'd like. So any questions just before I continue? You're like my, my four favorite people in the world right now. I also haven't had breakfast, so. Oops, so good question. Um, Filling coffee everywhere. Um, Vue is better to learn as the first framework. Yeah, I think that's actually, I think that's fair. 
Um, again, this is not about religious wars. It's about not alienating you as a developer, which I think is like, like, of the highest importance. Um, so, so yeah, I think Vue is actually, if I had to like say this very carefully, I think Vue is not just a wonderful way to learn a framework and like and supercharge your website. It's also a really good way to learn JavaScript because now you have a context to use JavaScript in a way that is, sorry about the recursion, um, in a way that is extremely well documented, has a friendly um, community. So, so, so my point is, yeah, if you, if you are thinking about JavaScript, you can help you. And it can help you organize what's called idiomatic code, which means you and other people, or you in the future, have a, have, will have a nicer, easier time understanding your own code. And Vue itself, um, as a framework, definitely um, it like, gives me some hope for humanity in a way, because I avoided web development. <clears throat> Seriously. <clears throat> I avoided web development for like years because I thought it was like this like narcissistic narcissistic act of like self hatred, um, and the thing is right. So I've only been doing this for like a few months or like two months. The thing is, um, Vue is re really refreshing, right? So, so if anything, I just want to contribute to the the quality of the resources that are available. So let's do a very very simple example. Hello world. Okay, so uh, it's gonna be. I think it's O3. Like, let's see, no, 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 no. O3. Oh no, no, no. It's not that one. I'm just gonna show you a a very simple example, and then we're gonna build it from scratch. Here we go. Hello view. Now you're aware. Let me just check the questions. Okay, so you're aware that. I love debuggers, and and th there's no exception here. We're going to use a, another kind of debugger, but not the same one that we've been using, the CSS one. Here we're going to use um, a really sort of clever view debugger that I I didn't make up, but I can't. I mean, I can't take credit for it, but I, it's a, it's a nice technique. So here is a website. Let, let's just like think about how this might be built. So here's the debugger. Okay, so there's no boxes, which means this is like. We have like a like this is a div. You can see like the top of the div is like this lighter color. So we have a div that is a hundred view height. It's occupying the full height. It's occupying the full width. And then I have some text centered inside of it. So that's why we don't have a box around it. But if we wanted to, we, we could just as easily. And I've got some text and I've got like an emoji, ofs. Um, but the point is that this is a really simple website. So what I'm going to do is scroll down, and now we have this really cute, like, <clears throat> cute, like, view version of this. So this is how we'll start. So when you're using view, the whole significance behind view is called data binding, which is like a super useless expression because if I like woke you up at three in the morning or whenever you go to bed, and I said, "What is data binding?" The, th the thing is like that. That word isn't useful in its own right, which in a way alienates you as a developer. So let's break that down. Um, <laughs> if you were like ever a kid and you like tie your friends up, it sounds so weird. If you're like ever a kid and you like tie your friends up and like where they tie you up and you have to like see how quickly you can escape, um, when you when you're like tying your hands together, that's called binding. So data binding is all about binding data to something or binding something to data. So let's say I have a variable in JavaScript, whoops, var like who equals view, right? I have a variable called hue and I am binding it, binding it, sorry, to my markup by interpolating it into my website. So the point here is that instead of like doing like p hello view, which would be easier, except it, it'll help us to have this abstraction going forward. If I wanted to like get a string from like a server, then I can much easier do this than to have like a special website for, for every person that I want to say hello to. Okay. Now, because the data is binded, this is pretty cool. If I go into inspect, let's see if this works. 
it should work. Okay, so the cool thing is that because this data is binded, I have my app and I can tell my app, I wanna tell it's hue, can I make that, yeah, I can make that bigger. I wanna tell it's hue, right, which is this one, I wanna change it, so let's say like, let's not do like hello view, like let's say, let's say like hello nick 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 nick. So let's do like nick 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 one one one. Okay, this isn't changing anything because it's the debugger, but yeah, right there. So, again, view is idiomatic. We have an abstraction for not binding data and updating the data, which is the significance of data binding. We are tying some information to some logic, or could be logic in the future. So let's talk about how we build this website. Um, it's, it's not that many lines of code, uh, so really don't feel intimidated by it. Um, so let's, let's take a look. So this was in E. Okay, so this should be more or less familiar to you, right? I have my doc type, which indicates which version of HTML I'm using. Just do this to use the latest version. This is optional. I just have an attribute that indicates to search engines or whatever um, that this website was encoded with English in mind. And then I have Metacarsa. Now this is actually important if you want to use like, um, to call it. If you want to use like emoji because you need to tell it not to use the browser's de facto um, character encoder. You want to use UTF or Unicode as the character encoder. This is more or less optional. Uh, we have, we're just telling it how to deal with like mobile devices and we are setting a CSS reset so that um, our style is not like going out of control. I've got some CSS classes. There's really nothing that special here. Um, but the significance of this is really here. So let me just rewind this. Okay, this could be HTTPS unpackage. I think I'll change it. So that could be view. That's fine. Um, so, and actually this doesn't need to be here. So let's put that there. Okay, so let's like really get into this. Cool. So you have a div and the div has a class of app. Fascinating. And inside of it, we don't have a normal string. Again, if we scroll down, we have this like funny, funny other kind of string, right? And then we have a script that's grabbing the view source code for us, those 10,000 lines of actually pretty human readable code. And then here, I've got some JavaScript. So, view is basically, we're initializing our app, so we do const or var, whatever, right? We're just doing app var, we'll do const, so we'll do const app equals new view, okay? Then my view is going to take some options. And so that goes inside of these, um, these are they brackets, parentheses? They're, I don't remember what they're called right now. Uh, I think they're brackets. Um, and then inside of it, we're doing two things. So let's look even closer. But again, um, any website you want to start using view, you only need a minimum of these like few lines of code. Okay, let me just check for questions. Please, like, if you have questions, don't be shy. Um, like, really don't be shy. Uh, this is like completely for you guys. Um, and I've spent a, quite a few hours like messing around with it. So I hope I can answer questions that come up. By the way, the homepage for view is viewjs.org. The guy who made it, his name is Evan Yu. He's on Twitter. And a really interesting thing is if you go to Patreon and you do like Evan Yu, view is open source, but it's also not backed by a major company. So Angular is, um, it was like, it's created by Google. Um, React is created by evil Facebook. And view, uh, He's an ex-Googler, so he's got like the douchey picture, <laughs> I think. But check this out. Um, Vue is not just open source, but it's like community funded. So say 15K over 12 minus the like 5% tax that you have to pay for using Patreon. Um, so, so that's pretty interesting. 
there are other frameworks in the water and people apparently love Vue so much that they're willing to like finance it themselves. Which is both a testament to Vue's like documentation and its ability to market itself as a useful um, thing for other people. But it's also interesting because um, there's another reason I can't remember, but it's interesting. That's great. That, I, that's, that is really my aspiration to make this stuff interesting and clear. So, view. By the way, quick thing. Have you ever been to, um, oops. Have you ever been to like code school? Uh, I think like dot code school. Code school was like this really badass website that got a, um, it got, uh, sorry, I can't think right now. It got acquired by Pluralsight, and Pluralsight is like a public company now, which is so funny, because it's in, like an e-learning company. Anyway, um, Code School is this like really cool website that you can do, it's kind of like Scrimba, it's, but it's not as nice, that you can do, um, that you can learn things. And Pluralsight acquired it. The reason I'm bringing this up is, oh, the guy who's like Greg Pollock, who is like the Code School guy, uh, you've probably seen him on the internet. This guy, Hanson, um, he he is like the documentation guy for Vue. So Vue has a core team. If you go to Vue.js, uh, sorry, Vue Mastery, they also have their own educational, both, there's like free and paid versions, but Greg's over here. Um, Greg is like really famous for, for getting behind powerful open source tools and creating documentation or educational or interactive educational tools for them. So he's like, you'll see him on the internet if you're like learning stuff. So it's interesting because he's dedicating his time to working on Vue, which I think is interesting because it's sort of like um, his presence indicates to an extent his confidence in Vue. So does Sarah Dresner, right? So Sarah Dresner is famous for like all of her cool website SVG related stuff. She's a famous speaker. Um, she's also on the view core, the core team, right? Right here. So you have a lot of people that have contributed significant amount of work or talks to the internet in general, and they seem to like view. So just know that if you're trying to figure out like how to defend view, all right, it's open source. It's completely financed by the community, which is has its pros and its cons, but it's cool. Um, and it's also, for, I mean, the way that people talk about it, so I'm, I'm sort of paraphrasing them, Vue is sort of a reaction to Meteor, Angular, React. It's like, it's like a reaction to these, which means that hopefully it's a, it's a bit mature in how it thinks about um, like design. Okay, great. So let's go back to our example. Here's how we start. So. Again, this is a little bit of overkill to like load 10,000 lines of code just to say, hello view, right? That is insane, but it will help us very quickly. So this, if you haven't seen it before, is like, I don't know, it's, it's like called handlebar, which it's like two bike handlebars stacked on top of each other, or like mustache syntax, which is like even more creative than handlebar. It's a special sort of syntax that you'll see within sort of the markup language world to express that there is some data being interpolated inside of this paragraph. So something that might be analogous to this is, is like if you're using like a print statement, like a print F in like C or some other similar language, and you've seen the percent %s. So this is extremely similar. It's not the same, but it's very, very similar to the significance of interpolating, so like interpolating, putting something inside of something else. Okay, so doing hello view, and, 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 and so here's how we start. We need to initialize our app and to put it in memory. So what does that mean? Like if I say like, if I have a variable, sorry, if I, if I have a, a literal, like I have like five in JavaScript, I just like five semicolon, right? That's a pretty meaningless statement. But what it is doing is using the computer in some way. If I put like var n equals, Five, right? It's not just a literal that's doing nothing. It's a literal being stored in memory. So when we start view, you're going to see this everywhere. We are initializing our app in memory. 
so that we can use it and we can call upon it and we can like go into console log, right? We can be like, we can be like a uh, app dot who, yo, I'm about to change your data. Fuck up your shit. So the point is that this is how we, we start. We need to initialize our app um, and put it into our computer's memory. So all this is on the client, right? You being the user or the viewer of your website, sorry, of somebody's website, it will run in your, your browser. Okay, so EL, which is like, what does EL stand for? So EL is for element. And we're binding our ID of app. So this is gonna be like a very jQuery syntax, right? Um, it's been a while, but like in jQuery, you would do like app, right? Blah, blah, blah. So this is how we effectively bind some logic to our app ID. Now view, it's not any different, right? So we're just binding some logic or some data to our ID of app. And then inside of it, now, okay, let me just like do this real quick. When you're learning programming, I am sure that you've been through this, right? It's like, we're gonna learn about variables, like woohoo, and then it's like, we're gonna learn about functions, woohoo, right? And then somebody like needs to like ruin everything and be like, yo, now we're gonna learn about properties and methods. And you're like, no, right? Those are like complicated words that don't make any sense. And like, like seriously, I didn't understand what a property versus a method versus like a variable or a function was for like a long time. And the thing is, all properties and methods are, are variables and functions that are attached to something else. So like, let's say you have like a struct in like some like language that I'm making up right now. Um, if we put a variable and a function inside of it, then these would be properties and methods. So properties and methods are the memory for a variable or a function just attached to some like object or structure, whatever. So you can say that these are, um, you can say that this is a property because we're attaching variables to the app's data, um, but people will say properties. So they won't say, I don't know if I said, people will say prop, people, yeah. People will say properties, they won't say variables. So variables are like much more naked, but properties are um, more organized. So let me just check the questions. Yeah, so that's the thing, Nick. Um, Nick, Nick, Nick. Um, Vue is JavaScript. It, like, the, fr the word framework, like, sort of is meaningless in the sense that it, it, it doesn't let you think about the, like, if I say, like, a train is a vehicle, or, like, if I say, like, a train is a utility, like, here's a better, if I say a train is a utility, that is, like, a meaningless expression. Because if I don't know what the word train is, but I do know what the word utility is, I don't have enough specificity about what a train is to actually comprehend that it's like a specific kind of vehicle that works in a specific kind of way. So to say that Vue is like a framework is kind of like saying like a thing is a utility. Um, a better way in my opinion to think about Vue is it is 10,000 lines of very powerful, fast, readable, intuitive, idiomatic code that means that you as a developer don't have to deal with the same level of pain of writing websites, HTML, CSS, or even JavaScript that you would have to if you are using vanilla HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. And the reason that this is significant um, is because at least one of the options, the, one of the ways that you can use Vue is without a build uh, process. Build process, sorry for like all this jargon. Build process is like when you need to go into like the command line and be like, 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 uh, like if I'm like in SAS, I might do like watch, or if I'm like in React, I don't know what it is. Um, or like if I'm in Go, Go build, or like GCC, or you know, there's like these are build processes. It's it's a step that you have to do in order to, to do the thing that you want to do. So it kind of gets in the way. Vue, at least one of the ways that we can use it, doesn't have a build process, which means that we really don't need to know much to get into Vue development. You don't need to understand the command line, right? You don't like, like, 
people like like I want to learn how to program and then you need to like suddenly learn the command line and that's a little bit unfair because programming and the command line actually are not one and the same and Vue is an example of where you can program in the absence of a command line if that's sort of better for you so Vue is pretty simple sorry I know I know I'm like going off pretty long um, okay cool so we have our data and in our data we are effectively saying like var who equals view as a string. The thing is, we are now looking at a property like we talked about before. And so we're in a object. So I have like var obj. So this is a JavaScript, JavaScript object, which will look eerily similar to JSON. It will look very similar. Um, and then inside of it, I'll have like, like, like this is my name of my prop. Like prop is like the cool word. It's like the hipster word for property. Like in React, right? Like props, that's properties. And then you'll have like a prop and then the value is like, yo, my name is Nick, Nick, Nick. And I'm your number one fan. Okay, here we have an object and we are attaching a property to it, which is simple enough, right? It's effectively like that. So I'd have to be like object dot prop blah, 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 right? Um, instead, I need to use this syntax because, because. Um, now, bear in mind, in JavaScript, it's like super quirky. Let's, like, let's say I have like property one. I'm like, oh yeah, like I want property two. I want two properties. Um, JavaScript will like have a fit. Like JavaScript hates when you do this and you, and you don't have a little comma right there. So just be like very nimble and pragmatic when you're programming in JavaScript because it can be a really a time waster um, if you're not careful. And and then another thing is you can use use script strict script strict strict at the top um, to sort of force you to get a few more warnings in the console. Um, okay, so this is an object that has two properties, each with their own string, and they have a comma in between them. But just bear in mind the last one doesn't have a comma and it it, I think it will complain, which is like insane. Um, it's like having, it's like complaining for having too many manners. So check this out, right? This should start to make sense. If I like take this guy and I'm like var obj, and then inside of here, right? It's gonna start to make sense. Now this is where it gets really interesting. We have a object inside of an object. And this is why it's like eerily similar to JSON, which is, it's, it's not the same, but it's very similar. It's a way that we can write and structure um, code using objects, which uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is like all functional stuff. Like you've heard about functional programming. I could be wrong, but I think this is like very related to functional programming. I'm not sure. Oh God, what did I do? Sorry. Okay, so now that we've sort of demystified what is a variable, what is a property, and what is an object, and what is an object inside of an object, which is like inception. Now this line should start to make sense. Okay, so let's get like a little bit more creative. Um, let's do like who, what, where. Okay, so let's do what, uh, what, and then let's do where. Now, pro tip, as you are writing view, the view developers have gone ahead and written you a little love letter in the form of a um, Chrome extension, uh, Chrome extension uh, view tool, view tools, view something. This one, which if you look at my, uh, if you look at my browser right here, um, I wanna zoom in, I don't know that that makes a difference for you. Uh, right here, there is a view, view logo, this guy, this logo, you can see it here in my Chrome. Um, I believe there's a Firefox version, don't quote me. But effectively, we can grab this view command line, uh, sorry, this view um, developer tools for Chrome to similarly make debugging view much easier. Now, what's really cool about this, anytime you go to a website that is using view, um, it'll show you that it's using view, which is nice, because it's like a way to look under the hood. So like, what's like an example of this? Um, if you know a website that uses Vue, let me know. Uh, sorry, I'm like 
Actually, our website's using Vue. It's supposed to be using Vue. Anyway, it'll like change colors. It's like in Lord of the Rings, where you have the sword, it can detect the orcs, it's like that. So it's cool. Um, anyway, so we go back to here, and we look at our sublime. So we have who, what, where in our object. So we say, who, view, what, a JavaScript framework. And then we'll like be like a little nosy, we'll be like utility. And then where, my computer, dog. And then now, we have an object inside of an object, and this object has properties. So, the significance of view is that I can say, instead of who, I can say what, or I can say where. And when I do that, um, when I do that, we're using, we're like, we're like using that printf that we were talking about before, we're like interpolating a value inside of our string which again, over time, will start to get really, really nice. So that's sort of the significance of you from sort of the, the hello world aspect. Um, now, I just want to bear in mind, anything that you see inside of here, it's called a DSL. <laughs> Sorry. DSL is for Domain Specific Language, which is basically a light version of JavaScript. So I can't expect to do like var a blah, 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 right? I can't expect to do native JavaScript in this like little thing, but I can expect to use a light version of JavaScript, which is actually better because it means that there's less quirkiness. We don't have to worry about like global variables, right? Like there's like a few, but you don't have to worry about like a tons of them. If you ever like open up the JavaScript, sorry, the, the console, and you like start playing around, pretty quickly you're gonna notice like the crazy extent to which you might need to be careful not to like botch your code with predefined global variables. So part of sort of the magic or the, the, the wonderfulness of you is that it's all about abstractions. And I don't mean like, I don't mean like, like the classic like object-oriented abstraction like a dog is an animal, which belongs to the animal kingdom, because that's sort of like how people talk about abstractions. What I mean is it's a much simpler way to think about JavaScript. That is, that we have some programming functionality, but we also don't need to worry so much about JavaScript's idiosyncrasies, because we're sort of in view land right here. Okay, so this is the, the very simple hello world. Um, now, what's really cool about this, let me back up a bit. If you have questions now would be like a wonderful time. Okay. Now, by the way, um, we, we don't come up with this part. We are using Vue. Um, Vue is looking for like elements, looking for data. It's looking for a couple of them, like methods, um, method, methods, yeah, watchers. There's a couple of these. So we don't choose what's on the left-hand side, but we choose what's on the right-hand side. And technically, Technically, this like blows my mind, you can just do like document, query, selector, whatever it is. Um, you can do that too. So this, this is JavaScript. I mean, you can do what you want here, but views like, nah dog. You can do it like, you can do it easier too if you prefer. Okay, so this is a hell of a I'm gonna look for questions and then we'll go to like a little bit more advanced example. Yeah, 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 there's an analogy. If JavaScript is traditional Chinese, <laughs> view is, that's interesting. If JavaScript is traditional, so somebody said, if JavaScript, Nick said, if JavaScript is traditional Chinese, view is like a simplified, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a simplification of what's otherwise like an insane language, right? So he's saying like Chinese is insane in the sense of its complexity. Um, view is like a simple dialect of Chinese, which is an interesting example. Okay, so that's a, that's great. Um, so Vue is like, <laughs> I don't want to like say something that might be racist. Um, Vue is like navigating like a street market. Well, hang on. It's like, if you go to like a street market, you're outside and you're like in the street market, it's like crazy and cluttered and like, it's like really intense. And then you walk down this like really nice clean alley. That's kind of what Vue feels like because you know, if you're doing front-end development, you really can't hide from JavaScript forever. I know personally, 
but it also doesn't mean you need to sacrifice too much. So use Vue um, really eagerly, actually. Like reach for Vue first um, because it can just like make writing web app apps intuitive. So, okay. So let's do a more advanced example. So let me just point something out. Um, two things to be aware of. If you don't have internet, like if I turn off my internet and the stream crashes, um, this website will act differently. So this like has surprised me a few times. So like let's say like, let's say like stole your view, right? Stole your view, right? So I, somebody stole my view. So one of the things that Vue does is if there is an error in your program or you don't have internet, so you don't have like Vue downloaded locally to your computer, um, Vue is going to give you what you wrote in your your like your paragraph, which is going to be like surprising. Like you're like you're doing something, the internet turns off, and then like suddenly you're like getting the handlebar syntax. Just bear in mind um, if something's wrong, including the internet connection, Vue's fallback is the literal HTML that you wrote, which can be like really, really confusing um, if you're not sort of expecting it. Okay, so this is really cool. Now. When you're learning about like CSS selectors, people are like, there is only one good and true ID, right? That's like, I, like IDs are like, like a dictator, like a god, right? Like we can't have more than one of them. But classes, oh, we can have like as many of those as we want, right? So, so this is an interesting consequence of binding our app to an ID, which is that that like we can't have more than one of them. And so this is where the, debug the debugger gets really interesting. Right, we've talked about a CSS debugger. This is a really simple view debugger that I'm about to show you. Um, okay, so we're gonna go back to where we started, which, yeah, right here. Okay. Sorry, I'm going a bit fast, there we go, okay. Had to go back in time, copy a string, go back to the future, uh, paste it. I always feel like I'm time traveling when I do this. Okay, so this is really interesting. Here I have a debug class, uh, which is like super simple, don't like overthink that. Um, I'm getting all these styles that I'm applying to my app, pretty simple. But I have another, another sort of copy of our app. So what happens? What am I doing wrong? Oh, somebody stole my view. <laughs> so embarrassing. Hello, view. But we can't have two of these. So what happens is now I have this like really nice debugger mode of our app. And all I needed to do is effectively copy, paste it, and I added a class just for sort of decoration. And so the point is, as we get to sort of more advanced examples, you're going to see you know, you can use this technique of just like copy and paste your, your app twice to, to see the like literal string that, like the literal text that is your, your website's code. Okay, so um, I'm feeling pretty good, so I wanna do some more, but I wanna take questions and I think we should take like a five minute break. When I post this to YouTube, I'll probably like make this part one and then part two. So yeah, questions, thoughts, comments, ideas, solutions. What do you think? That's so sweet, yeah. Okay, great. Um, why don't you guys like just take, take a few minutes, or at least I'm gonna take a few minutes, um, because I can't just like fire hose you with information, but just like five minutes. Um, and then we're gonna do a like, semi-interactive example because so far we've just been data binding which is like cool but um there's more we can do so i'll stop the recording keep the stream online and then five minutes we'll come back to this i love all of you by the way all right let me pause this the, the stream's gonna stay don't worry